Friends, last time you hung out with us, we went through Twins free agent signings that you had most likely forgotten from 1987 to 1997. No promises we'll get through a decade this time. In fact, I doubt we will. But hang with us because this is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hey, what do you say? Thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen today. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And joining me is my trusted cohort, my ally, Mr. Dave Brown. Dave, how are we doing? Hi Brandon, we're uh, we're in the middle of a snow day. We're getting snow. We're getting a snow day tomorrow, an AMI learn at home day. So we're it's finally winter. So what does a snow day look like in your neck of the woods? Like four inches of snow. Okay, not very much, but it is. Uh, it's very mushy, and if it freezes, it will be hard on the transportation. So it's uh, it's best. I don't snow shame anyone because honestly. Uh, we all kind of lose our minds for that first snow of the year, regardless of if we live in Antarctica or anywhere else. So we'll allow it. Uh, today's show is uh, brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics to treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at Jace Medical and use code locked on to get 20 bucks off your first purchase. That's J A S E medical.com. And again, thanks for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and also on YouTube. And of course, again, Locked on Podcast Network, we're your team every day. And again, I would like to encourage you to be interactive with the show, especially episodes like this. We're kind of in an unintentional episode series because I started doing the research on Twins free agents that you either didn't know about or forgot. And, uh, it ended up being like, I don't know, six pages worth of research. And um, I really am doubtful that we're going to get through 10 years like we did last time. But uh, there's some doozies on here. Well, hopefully there's some twins, too. <laughs> True. Well, so just a quick recap of the last episode. Steve Carlton, Kerry Taylor, John Candelaria, Corey Lytle, Burt Blylevin. Steve Ontiveros, Kevin Moss, Peter Moylan, Eric Anthony, Greg Olson, Darren Jackson. Any of those stand out to you from that last episode, Dave? Well, it's funny. Uh, you know, you mentioned a couple of guys who are are sort of famous for coming yep. back later in their careers or what, you know, Bly Levin. But you're talking about like Bly Levin coming back after he came back the first time. So it's uh it's a little it, it was a little tricky. It wasn't that that first comeback when he uh you know, when they won the World Series comeback, it was the one after that. So it was, it's uh, fun stuff. It's a, a, the transactions, it's, uh, you know, people you think they have like nice, neat careers where it's over, but it's not. It's sometimes it's very messy and they come back 12 times. And that could be what we're talking about today. Yeah. Well, I kind of left you in the dark. I do have the document shared with you, but I think it's also maybe a little more fun. if you... hint, hint, Dave, read the document. No, no, no. I think it's more fun if you react off the cuff. I just think that's more fun. Now, I did tease you, or well, not tease you. That sounds gross. Um, I did kind of tempt you. That also sounds gross. I, I did tell you that we had Esteban Beltre to lead off this episode. December 5th, 1997, twins sign him. Um, Big arm. That's pretty much all I remember is how much they just raved about his throwing arm. I want to say with Texas. Would that be right? Yeah, started his career with the White Sox and was just just a horrendous hitter. Yep. Like a 25 adjusted OPS. I'm not even exaggerating. Yep. Uh, went to the Rangers and was just simply not a good hitter. Uh, but with the White Sox, he was terrible. But yeah, he had a, he had a big hose and he had a strong arm too. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh it was the tail end of the banjo hitting shortstop era so i kind of get it uh not his fault he came up at a time when nomar garcia para and a-rod yeah. and, Peter and all those other shirtless guys uh, <laughs> came up esteban beltry did not make the episode here so far 
Well, we do what we can. With uh, and shirtless and hoses. In <laughs> into the new year, they uh, they signed Ricky Bonus as a free agent. Now, Ricky Bonus, I remember as a brewer, and I think many people do as well. Um, and for a second, I was like, oh, yeah, the guy that faced Scott Erickson in his no-hitter. But I think that was actually Jaime Navarro. And I used to get those two confused as a kid, Ricky Bonus and Jaime. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I, uh, Jaime Navarro. I, I lost his last name for a second. Um, but, yeah, uh, it was it was Jaime Navarro. Uh, but Ricky Bonus, like, again, a, a, a bona fide – big leaguer at one point in his career that I had no idea was ever even on the twins radar. And now a uh, bullpen coach for the nationals, it says. Uh, yeah. Long time guy that you'll find on a coaching staff. You know, it, he, he was sort of uh, known for his talent, but maybe also a certain amount of immaturity sometimes, but mm -hmm. uh, as a player, but uh, maybe not necessarily a guy you would think that would have the patience to, or someone else would have the patience to have as a co as a teacher as a coach. So good for him that he's continuing to uh, pass on the Ricky Bonus ways uh, into his um, coaching uh, age bracket. Well, and he played from you cut out there, Brandon. Uh, the road for him with now you're Marlon. Like, oh, strikeouts per nine, and we don't even really. My screen maybe freezing. Well, yeah, you well. were freezing. I, I got strikeouts per nine, but maybe the first ten seconds before that, you were. Now oh. you're back. Well, Ricky Bonus, Continue. four point oh strikeouts per nine, uh, and just a sign of the times where that was just kind of whatever. You know, that era is over. Yeah, we didn't even. Yeah, now it'd be. You wouldn't even make the big leagues. Not even close. Um, Twins not done getting ready for 1998. Uh, eight days later, sign Orlando Merced. What do you remember about Orlando Merced? I remember him being from baseball cards, uh, decent but not great corner outfield, first base type uh, hitter wise. Um, most, most surprisingly, of the Pirates part of there. their. Uh, sort of platoon of guys who weren't Barry Bonds or Bobby Bonilla. And he played first base for them, I think, and was pretty good. And uh, yep. I think maybe later also, maybe that year in 98, he was, on, was he on the Cubs and did he have a big hit? He might have. He got, he got traded to the, well, he played on three teams that year and actually um, he hit 289 for the twins in 63 games with a 345 on base and a 422 slugging. Um only played 84 games total. Uh, I get the sense that, you know, he may not have been entirely healthy. But anyway, the Twins trade him to Boston with Greg Swindell for Joe Thomas, John Barnes, and Matt Kinney. So uh, he gets released by the Red Sox on September 1st um, and then signs with the Cubs, signs with the Expo, signs with the Astros, 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 Pirates. Uh, out of the game by 2004, uh, but not, kind of an uncharacteristic signing for a for a Twins team that wasn't known to spend money or really go get big talent. And it's not like 1998 uh, was going to be a big season either. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, it, it wasn't long before. I mean, you know, Merced, uh, a good clubhouse guy. Maybe that had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who the, the linkages would be with Merced. I wasn't ready for him. But he was uh, no. definitely – he was a guy who was, uh, you know, one of those um, – guy, not a big power hitting first baseman. You know, usually he was sort of out of character in that way. I think he was pretty good defensively, or at least he wasn't bad. But, you know, yeah. left-handed hitter um, and just one of those guys that you had uh, that could maybe get on base a little bit and – uh, not not a big power hitter, but still someone that was good enough to uh, not embarrass himself in a in a batting at a batter's box. It, it feels like there's an untold story here. He went 0 for 9 with the Red Sox in just a handful of games, and yet was with them from July 31st. So the entire month of August, something's not adding up here. That we 
just I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. To me. Was that a playoff team? That was. I know they were in '99. The '98 Red Sox finished '92 and '70, and second in the AL East, lost the AL Division Series to Cleveland, which I believe would have been a Mike Hargrove operation. Yep, Mike Hargrove under the tutelage of John Hart and Lee McPhail, the fourth was scouting director. So yeah, some pretty big names there. Uh, let's come back in a second here. We got a another uh, outfield type. The Twins signed later in 1998, but first. A word from our friends at FanDuel. So the NFL season has wrapped up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Now, right, right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Win or lose. And the app is super easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet. There's live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. Parlay, it sounds like Parlor. Uh, it sound, I'm thinking like Parlor tricks and stuff. But uh, in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and much, much more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. Or a field goal, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, again, right now, 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. FanDuel.com is, uh, or sorry, FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Caught me stumbling there a little bit, Dave Brown. Um, uh, I would never catch you. Yeah, no, probably not a good idea. Uh, December 15th, 1998, the Twins signed Melvin Nieves. And um, love him. Uh, 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 it's it's so funny. The second I say a name, you can hear both of us start rapping on our keyboards. Like, ooh, what can I find on this guy in a couple seconds? But um, Nieves, career one thousand two hundred and twenty eight at bats, thirteen hundred ninety two <laughs> plate appearances. And guess what his baseball reference WAR was? Um, oh, I'm cheating, so I'm looking, and it's not very good. Minus two point three. So, uh. Yeah, he, as I, I, he loved to strike out. He couldn't help himself. 158 times in one year, 157 in the next with Detroit. Now, I remember him with Detroit. And uh, this was the era, if people don't weren't old enough or just don't remember, um, where, you know, a 24-year-old in Detroit, he hit 24 homers, had a an OPS of 807, and that's a 101 OPS plus. So basically, that's what a league average hitter for Detroit. Uh, they were still at Tiger Stadium for a couple more years at that right. point. I think 99 was when they started. Nope. Looks like uh, 2000 was Comerica. Yeah, so, 2000 was Comerica's first year. That's right. You're but, but either way, like I would have guessed it would have been at least a little higher than that. But again, that's the offensive era that they played in then. We like to hit homers, uh, and some people like to do uh, certain pills or creams. Yep, they did. You know, maybe hit a few more homers than was uh, as the as the emperor would say uh, that was unnatural. <laughs> well, he spent zero time with the Twins in the major leagues. In fact, his career wrapped up with the Reds as a 26 year old in 1998 sometimes though you know like i look at guys whose career end like that and wonder like when they first realize like i'm never going to get back to the major leagues because um he ended up going overseas in 99 he right. signed uh december 15th probably got um i would guess maybe like a spring training sold to the team in japan the I'm trying to see if I can read this correctly. Daiei, D-A-I-E-I. -E -I. So the Fukuoka Daiei Hawks. Um, their manager, Sadaharu O, one of the probably the, the pressure most pressure there. Yeah. And uh, by the way, 27-year-old, he hit 17 homers, struck out 105 times in 290 plate appearances, which seems almost impossible to do. But a 9-11 OPS. Uh, some fun names on this team, though. Al, really only two. Uh, Tadahito Aguchi yeah. and Kenji Jojuma. What was your favorite Kenji Jojuma? He was good. He was catcher with the Mariners. Remember? Yeah, and uh, it was it was cool because uh, when he came over, 
most of the guys who were coming over from Japan were pitchers. So it was like, all right, we got a, an offensive a hitter guy, and he was really good. He's a good catcher. So I remember Kenji Jojima, absolutely. At Melvin Nieves, though, if you're like me, if you're people of a certain age, mine, old, you remember that he was, you know, uh, he was a baseball card guy. He was a fantasy guy. He was a prospect. He was mm -hmm. eh, top 50, 100, somewhere in there with the Braves and then with the Padres. And uh, first gained prominence when he was traded for Fred McGriff. Ooh. Yes. Traded. That was how the Braves got Fred McGriff. They, was, the, the guy was, they gave up was Melvin Nieves, Vince Moore, and Donnie Elliott. We remember Donnie Elliott, too. Fondly. Um, so, yeah, that that was where he we, we first learned about Melvin Nieves. Big strikeout, big, big, lots of pop, lots of pop, you know, yeah. but too much swing and miss. Uh, it sounds like like a modern day like uh, Brian Mill Reyes or um, yes, I, I'm trying to think of the other guy that kicked around for a while. Anyway, not important. I think Fred McGriff's was the day he was traded that the fire was in the press box in Atlanta. I think that might have been. Oh, that could be. I think uh, again, not locked on Braves, not locked on Padres, but um, nevertheless, uh, we got down a rabbit hole there, and yeah, uh, April sixth, nineteen ninety nine, and I'm only doing this for the name. The Twins signed Gus Gandarillas as a <laughs> Gus Gandarillas was drafted by the Twins in nineteen ninety two. You made that up? Uh, nope. In the third round, I actually had his baseball card. He was on one of those. So if you do. If you remember the 1993 tops set, they had like these little four pack or like four guys on a card. And it's like rookies. And um, I know there's like a Mike Piazza one where he's on there with like Brooke Fordyce and whoever else. Uh -huh. And then there's a Derek Jeter one, I think, from that year, too. But I'm, I'm not positive. But uh, he was on one of those. And I remember having that card and just being like, there's no way this guy's name is real. There's just no way. But he was very real. And actually, so. Um, re-signed or came back to the Twins in 99 after the Pirates released him. Uh, he was a Pirate for a few months, which um, would be a weird sentence in any other context. <laughs> uh, next, Midre Cummings yes. signs with the Twins May 14th, 1999. And Midre Cummings, like, again, I know he's not maybe that exciting to the average fan, but he played in the big leagues for a long time, uh, over a thousand at bats. And he was actually drafted by the twins in the first round of the 1990 draft. So again, another prodigal son coming back. But um, that first round, by the way, Chipper Jones, Tony Clark, Alex Fernandez, Mike Lieberthal, Rondell White of uh, twins fame. Not exactly. Oh, yeah. Carl Everett, maybe the one of the Everett, one of the craziest guys to ever play the game. And then uh, Minnesota native Dan Wilson snapped up by the Reds out of the University of Minnesota. Uh, 13 career war, a lot of time with the Mariners, as I recall. Anyway, Cummings. The Mariners, they love him there. Yeah. Uh, 93 games with the Twins. Cummings had a 78 OPS plus. Uh, 274, 325, 388 slash, which would look a lot better in this run environment as opposed to that one. He's from the. He was born anyway in the in the Virgin Islands, in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I don't know how long he spent time there, but uh, he was kind of a, a curiosity for that reason. Uh, and high school in Miami, so I yeah. don't know how much time he spent there, but still, uh, yeah, I, I remember he was a guy. Uh, you know, it was a first round pick. People thought, well, maybe this guy will be something. And like you said, he had a long career, mm -hmm. twelve hundred plate appearances. It wasn't great. You know, it wasn't awful, um, but yeah, Midray Cummings. That's uh, brings back lots of uh, fantasy baseball. All right, I've, I've got to have enough minor leaguers here for my AL only draft mm -hmm. kind of memories. So it reminds no, me of that. Well, this next name is going to bring up some memories, at least because he was around for a while. On January fourteenth, two thousand, the Twins signed Bobby Ayala as oh. a free agent. So. Uh, Numbers not maybe as good as I remembered, but a bit of a guy ahead of his time. So I hosted a podcast with Greg Olson. I always talk to him about he was ahead of his time too. Bobby Ayala in 1994 had 12.1 strikeouts per nine innings. So again, to, to go back to how unthinkable that is, uh, we were just talking 
about Ricky Bonus's career strikeout rate of 4.0, and he played basically the 90s. Right. Uh, 12 strikeouts per nine back then was unthinkable. So, again, it's a reliever, 76 strikeouts in, in little under 60 innings. It's not like he was a starter doing that. You know, it's not like he was Randy Johnson, but, you know, he was the setup man behind Randy Johnson there for a while. Right. Yeah, definitely a uh, guy, Bobby Ayala, you always, again, in the extended fantasy leagues, uh, kind of like now a days, you sort of look to, well, if Score the closer sheet. implodes, who are they going to go to? And yep. Bobby Ayala would be that would be one of those guys. He'd be, he'd be on your short list of, well, maybe he doesn't start the season getting saves, but he's going to later in the season. And uh, maybe not more often than not, but uh, something like that, he, that would happen. 18 saves in 94, because I was trying to remember who closed those years. Ayala closed 19 saves in uh, 95. I was thinking Norm Charlton, but I don't think he was. uh, No, Charlton closed in 96. Hmm. Uh, Rafael Carmona, I remember him. Uh, Mike Jackson, who uh, we'll get to here in just a second, because he was a twin for a hot minute. Um, Yeah, so... Uh, bringing back again some memories. I I hope enough people are listening who watched baseball in the '90s because this is gonna really you know hit them in the nostalgia bone. But um, we're about to jump. Actually, Bobby Ayala jumped us into the 21st century, January 14th, 2000. Our next one's gonna be January 27th, 2000. But first, a word from our friends at um, Jace Medical. I'm getting stuck here. My computer's not working. Doggone it. Here we go. All right. So again, we're in kind of a funny time for supply chain stuff. And Jace Medical wants to take some of that off your plate when it comes to medication. So we come to sports. We want to talk about kind of like escaping from the realities of life, but we do have to prepare for real life. So let's talk about that for a second. The FDA says that pharmacies are running out of antibiotics, just simple ones like amoxicillin, And we're right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade, which is super scary. I've already been sick at least once. uh, I'd I'd say probably twice. You and I both had fairly big spurts of December uh, wiped out for us. So, you know, I actually use I actually use my Jace case. I I actually was uh, very, very happy to have some Zithromax in mind. So uh, awesome product. Uh, So I can't imagine, though, a more helpless feeling than if. You know, one of my family members or kids uh, got sick while supply chain issues kept them from a medication that they desperately needed. So thankfully, we're okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses like UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and many others. That could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com, complete your physician encounter, and it will be reviewed by a board-certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. I got mine so fast. Um, Just a tremendous, tremendous product. And it's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com and use the offer code locked on to get 20 bucks off your first order. That's jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E, medical.com. All right, time to bring this thing full circle, Dave Brown. And we are talking about Butch Husky. Oh, Mets, Giants. Twins. Twins. Do you know what he's most famous for as a twin? I, since, you, since you're not by birthright a Minnesotan, you may not know the lore of Butch Husky. Do you? No. What's, uh, what, what is he most famous for with the Twins? Running into the left field wall at the Metrodome full speed, chasing down a ball. Uh, I think it was actually, I think it was actually a home run. They were playing in these hideous turn back or turn forward the clock, like futuristic uniforms. I hope you're looking it up right now while we're, while we're, I am. Yeah. Cause you need to see this. Um, and I want to say the next day they put like tape on the wall where he had been like uh, the outline when you watch a crime show and someone gets murdered. Never understood why exactly that was the thing. Um, did you find it? Cause there's I'm some, stu- I never did you, did you know, did you find it though? Did you find the video? There's super, 
they're super obscure. I, like, I, I messed everything up by looking up what you were talking about. And did you find? No, no. Volume. I'm asking. Did you find it though? Did you find but it? But I can't hear you, so you're gonna have to put up subtitles. Oh boy, I don't know what's going on here. Then I didn't mute I myself. Cut it out. I can't. Let's see. Let me let me exit the show, and then I'll come back. This is live, people. This is live TV, audio, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Mr. Dave Brown having some technical difficulties, but um, we'll try bring him back in. Um, for those of us, are we back, Dave Brown? Are you there, Brandon? I'm here. Are you here? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm back now. Could you okay. hear me before? Yes. Oh. So Butch Husky, did you find the video? I did, but then I I frightened myself into getting rid of it. Um, it's it was kind of like grainy footage because 2000 TV was shot in like 180p. Um, mm -hmm. But oh my gosh, it's incredible! And I, I kind of want you to watch it so you can just I can just see your reaction. Okay, here he goes. Close. It's so <laughs> He had no idea the fence was there. Ab absolutely. It was like he was playing. Oh, you know, I'm in a baseball you know, stadium. Who knew? Yeah, you know, like when you play JV baseball and you drive past and you'd see the field with no fence and you're like, oh, shoot. Warning that's where we're playing today. Fence. That's where we're playing today. Uh, that's what he was prepared for because he ran headlong into what I, ass I assure you is a very station was a very stationary wall. Um, that was a, you know, like the. The wall in center field had kind of some spring to it. You know, Tory yeah. Hunter or Bucket would steal a homer and it would kind of fling them back Spider-Man style. Right. That's not in play here. Um, so I would highly recommend people going out of their way to look up this Butch Husky play because it's uh, it's for fans of twins fans of a certain age. It's uh, ingrained in their lore. And uh, that was his last big league season. Um, I don't believe he actually physically died from that play. I'm kidding. Um, but he ended up getting shipped to Colorado, 998 OPS for them down the stretch, which actually was a 128 OPS plus. Somehow someone had a good OPS plus in Colorado in 2000, but um, traded with Todd Walker, uh, who was probably in the Tom Kelly doghouse at the time, for Todd Sears and Cash, Todd Sears, first baseman who – Got exactly 85 plate appearances in the big league, big leagues, 80, no, 85 at bats. Sorry, my uh, my brain is not working. Uh, no 94. Look that up, Brandon, it's okay. 86, 86 plate appearances with the Twins. So um, I remember him uh, not doing a whole lot. But Butch Husky, uh, that was another obscure Twins free agent signing. If we go to September 27th of did, oh, did I steal some of your thunder on uh No, I, I was just going to linger on Butch Husky. It was funny. They were playing in the, uh, the uniforms of the future, and he kind of showed that he didn't really have a future with the Twins after running into the fence. Like, I almost didn't have a future on this planet. Right. Um, Next twin signing, and this one's pretty blah, so we can run through it pretty fast. But uh, they signed Jason Simon Tachi, who – actually debuts with the Cardinals in 2002, so a little over a year later, and finishes ninth in the Rookie of the Year in 2002, which, oh boy, ninth. Um, not great. Any guess on who the 2002 NL Rookie of the Year was? Albert Pujols? No. Nope. I'll give you a hint. You'll never get it. <laughs> get not up. a great hint. Um, then I don't know. Colorado Rockies pitcher. Oh, uh, yeah. Still not going to get it. Alliteration. Yeah. Jason. Jennings. Jason Jennings. Jason oh, Jennings. Jason Jennings. And I'm not saying that I looked there, but he had the yep. biggest butt, the, the, the biggest lower half you've ever seen in your life. Go look up Jason Jennings, and he is just meaty. I don't know if that footage will be as fun to relive. No, as not running into a fence. But, um, Simon Tachi, just a, a – you know, back end starter, but again, um, before he was in the big leagues, he was at least briefly a twin. Uh, I was completely unaware until I was doing research. June rookie of the month in two thousand two. Um, two thousand two is a while ago, so That's I don't know. 20, I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, 
then uh, February 23rd, 2001, again, this is not going to be one that is going to get people all that excited. But, uh, again, a guy who played in the big leagues for quite a while, Damon Hollins. Oh, yeah. I uh, I remember him as uh, – he's one of those rare right-handed hitter, left-handed throwers. Um, I think I recall hearing when I was a kid that there was only, like, two or three of those players at any given moment. Right. Uh, and then Ricky, Ricky Henderson. Was, yeah, Ricky was one of them. Um, that's me quoting Ricky saying that. Uh, <laughs> Ricky was one of them. Um but Damon Hollins, yeah, just a uh, you know, guy who was with the Rays for actually probably uh, you know a little longer than people realize, or a little more experience. Uh, Seven hundred and twenty-four plate appearances over two seasons, oh five, oh six. Um, so just before the Rays started getting any good, uh, Joe Madden, the manager, but uh, you know, not. Not exactly a, a household name, Damon Hollins, but again, I, I had no idea he was ever even part of the Twins, and it would have been about five years before he featured prominently for the Rays. But again, another future big leaguer that I had no idea had ever passed through the Twins system. Top 100 prospect at one time with the Braves, Damon Hollins. Yeah, right? Uh, next one is a whole heap of fun to say. Uh 2,462 career plate appearances as an outfielder for 0.3 baseball reference war. Quentin McCracken. Love Quentin McCracken. Another expansion dude. Yep. Yep. And uh, he played 24 games for the Twins in 2001. That 2001 Twins team, 85 and 77. Uh, last year of Tom Kelly before he handed the reins over to Ron Gardenhire, who would would go on to lead them to numerous division titles and no playoff success outside of uh, that brief run when they eliminated the Moneyball A's. Um, but that 0-1 team was the one that staved off contraction. This is their starting lineup by age. I'm not going to say their names, but 24, 27, 21, 23, 28, 26, 25, 29. And 25. Pretty young big league team there, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And it, obviously it was a good thing that uh, they, they didn't let Bud expunge them from the league because it would have been uh, quite a disaster for Minnesota to lose a team in that regard. And uh, especially one that was on the come, even though they didn't have the playoff success, like you said, but still. By the way. The 29-year-old starter in the starting lineup was Matt Lawton, who was traded at that deadline for 36-year-old or age 36 season, Rick Reed, who we talked about uh, previously on Locked on Twins. It sounds like we're doing like one of those beginning of the show callbacks. But right. um, we are yeah. in a role in a sense. Matt Lawton, a steroid? Uh, yep. yep. When he was, I think he was the, that, surprisingly. The for Mariners, like late, late, late in his career. Yeah. Um, let's get through a couple more. Um, I want to get through this one on 2002. So we got four more to go and then we'll call it a wrap. We got through, we'll get through five years today, which, um, again, I think is not that bad. Uh, January 14th, 2002, the twins signed Kurt Abbott. Now Kurt Abbott again, uh, or not again, first time we're talking about him, uh, never played in the big leagues with the twins. In fact, his big league career was over at this point. But I remember him on those early Marlins teams, kind of a uh, shortstop, and then eventually became more of a utility guy. But, uh, you know, everyday regular player who was just kind of hanging on at the end of his career, the Twins give him a look. And again, never had any idea he was with the team. The people, they sneak in in, in the middle of the night sometimes when they when they join your baseball team. And you have to be, you know, super vigilant to check the transaction wire. Exactly. Never Not to be outdone, next day the Twins signed Brian Meadows as a free agent. Uh, Pirates right-hander? Yep, more relief appearances as his career went on. He started out as a starter, wasn't particularly good with the Marlins, and then became a decent-ish reliever with the Pirates at the end. Uh, finishes out with the 2006 Rays of Damon Holland's infamy. But again, uh, Meadows, this is a guy who was throwing 180, 200 innings almost at the beginning of his career. And uh, the Twins grab him in 2002 
where he so he spent 01 with the Royals, your your Royals with a ERA of almost seven. So this was a classic twins pickup at the time. But um signed January 15th, released March 28th, signs with the Pirates two days later. That feels like a end of spring training. You're not gonna make the team, we're gonna help you find a job thing. Right. And one thing that I remember about him from before was he was a guy that they they one of the guys they brought in when they like blew up a Marlins champion. Like, all right, yeah. we're, we're getting rid of all the players that know how to do anything, but we're going to bring you these youngsters, including Brian Meadows, and he's going to be in the rotation. He's going to give us 30 starts. We're going to lose 99 games, but that's what we're going to do. Eight days later, they signed Michael Jackson as a free agent. So we were talking about him as, I mean, he played everywhere. Um, am I remembering correctly that he had a Fu Manchu why, I don't why know about I, a Fu Manchu. I know he had a goatee, but uh, I thought he had like I, a big old Fu Manchu that year. But I, I couldn't remember. But again, a pretty good late inning reliever. Um, you know, or at least uh, one who had a lot of uh, a lot of success hanging around eighty six to two thousand four. He basically was a big leaguer from when I was born until I graduated high school. That's uh, that's pretty. Crazy. Well, he wanted to see you through it, and you know, you you did with him. Yeah. He's a White Sox in uh, 04. I don't know if I you remember that. O two. He was the most everything. He uh, had a three two seven ERA for the Twins that year. Uh, set up man for yeah, let's get a mustache. Maybe I'm just remembering wrong. But uh, O two would have been setting up. Would that have been Eddie Gordado? I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. Eddie Gordado, uh, Latroy Hawkins. That bullpen though. Um, each of these relievers had an e the highest ERA of this bunch is Michael Jackson at 327. Uh, Latroy Hawkins, JC Romero, Tony Fiore, and Eddie Gordado. Uh, Tony Fiore won 10 games that year. I know wins don't really get anybody all that excited anymore, but um, 10 wins as relievers. Wow. Oh, I, I do not, I cannot picture Tony Fiore coming into a game. I must have been busy. Palm ball. He had a palm ball. Okay. That was his, uh, that was his thing. Now, we're going to end on a painful note, Dave Brown. Um, April 15th, 2002, another prodigal son returned. Uh, Right-handed reliever whose tenure with the Twins only lasts about two months and was marked by just a brutal, brutal walk-off grand slam allowed at Yankees. You're talking about Mike Trombley? You're talking about Mike Trombley. And, I love uh, Mike Trombley. I want to say that was in pouring rain, but I could be wrong. But I definitely remember watching the game, and and it was a, a grand slam. And, like, honestly, that maybe was the fuse that lit the powder keg for them just owning the Twins for 20 years. Right. I mean, because, you know, they, they, never, they never really came back from that, at least not until they won the season series this last year. Right. I was a big Mike Trombley fan and fantasy ball. I was I was I was hoping he'd be the the save guy and it you know it happened basically just once, but uh, well, but one one of my favorite all time twins, Mike Trombley. As I'm I recall, it was such a painful ending. As well, I guess I'm going to do one more. Uh, as I recall, he threw a fork ball, which just fascinated me to no end as a ten year old kid back in his first tenure. Um, this is a name I don't think you're going to remember, but on November twenty second, two thousand two, the twins signed Carlos. Polito. Oh, I remember Carlos Polito. He just well, he was died away. Like ago, didn't he? What's that? Didn't he die recently? Literally 10 days ago or something. I didn't even realize. That's crazy. Um, I think I mentioned but, uh, it on Twitter. Can't believe um, you're not reading me. So he pitched for, in fact, so the Scott Erickson no hitter against the Brewers. I believe the next day, Carlos Polito was starting for the Twins as a 22 year old rookie, um, lefty. And so I remember him as a graphic on the screen or something like that. Then he doesn't go play in the big leagues at all again, and then makes another start for the twins, just one in 2003. So he went nine years between major league starts, both with the same team. Pretty kind of, cool. Kind of he, he went over to Japan, did you say, or am yes, I he was in Japan for a while. Um, they don't. They have him as 2000 and 2001 in Japan, and then they just have that goofy gray space with no information about him uh, from 90. 
95, he was at Salt Lake. 96, he was at Iowa, so in the Cubs organization. Went to Montreal for a couple of years. Looks like he kicked around in AAA, then went and played for Somerset, which, uh, you know, one of the indie leagues. Oryx for uh, Japan. Is that the Oryx Blue Wave, I think? Yeah, the Blue Wave, and, for uh, sure. And then comes back to the big leagues. But I was unaware of the Mexican passed. League, too. Yeah, so he was well traveled. Uh, played with Orlando Merced with the 2000 Oryx Blue Wave. So, um, how's. Oh, Ichiro was on that team. So Taguchi, John Nunnally, Troy Neal. Uh, is. Remember, some guys, a remember some guys, boy. Well, this entire show has been that. Um, yeah, so we'll come back with uh, 2000. We'll start with 2003. So we got through five years. Uh, not bad for a day's work day, Brown. Uh, if you can get it. No, I yeah. uh, I enjoy these uh, rambling rambles. That's what we do. Uh, we'll come back with Shane Andrews, Mike Fetters, and a pitcher who won double-digit games for the White Sox. But we won't give that one away. And then there's a crazy one who signed as an amateur. It was voided. And uh, he's no longer with us. I'll just say that much. Wow, uh, life. But thanks for hanging out with us. This has been Locked On Twins. We appreciate you so much. And we'll see you 